Hey, what's up? Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today, we're going to learn how to paint real people. And what do I mean by real? That it's not the impression I got from other artists or how, or how I learned people should be painted. It's not that red dot for the face, then black for the body, a suit or something like that. No, we're going to actually paint the people as we see them. We'll practice going beyond autopilot and really rendering things uh, in a more, I think, realistic manner. So with that being said, let's take it to the table, get started. So again, the emphasis here is on getting the people to look like they actually are, rather than relying on crutches. I'm gonna try and do that as much as possible. It's still hard, so I'll try. Now, before we even get to the people, we have to put in the major shapes, okay? A lot of people mistake the uh, final details as something that brings the, the painting beauty and, and its realness when in fact it doesn't work like that. What brings a painting all of its grace and you know uh, the sense of realism and, and just the good, uh, good looks of a painting is the main shapes, the major composition. And we have a beautiful composition here. We have this huge building here. This is actually a Kmart. Uh, as you may have seen uh, in the reference photo. And then the, the composition is really clever, actually. You know what? I'm gonna move this entire building to the right. Okay, spontaneous decision time. The reason for that is I wanna leave more space here to the left. Now there's a bunch of details and street and people here, but then it goes back up into some other buildings. It go kind of like so. And the end of it is the building that's dead in front of us. Okay, we won't see its left section so much and it's not as important. But this is the building. I'm going a little more zoomed in than what the reference necessarily shows. And then in the middle here, I do have this lovely building in the background. And that's what attracted me to this composition, actually. The, the gap here. Oh, sorry, I actually have more space. So let's put it in with more space. I have all the way up to here. So I'm going to place it here. Um, and again, this is what attracted me to this um, painting, the, the lovely composition of the... I did a big mess here. Let's get rid of some of the lines. Um, that's the tip of the building. Then it goes like that, kind of triangularly. Hopefully that makes more sense. Um, and yeah, just the, the way there's this line and then this goes up and this goes... I don't know, I loved... The, the composition of the sky in this. Okay, so I've been pretty loose and impressionistic with the uh, buildings, but now when we get to the people and some more important details, I'm gonna be more accurate because again, that's my goal here. So my angle is actually, um, the point of view is a little higher than the horizon line, which means the heads of the people are gonna be higher than the horizon line, okay? We have a couple here, sort of around this area. Okay, I'm gonna drop them in here. We have this woman here to the left. I'm gonna bring her a little more to the right and improvise the parts of her that I couldn't really see, okay? And uh, I'm just putting in uh, indications of where things are gonna come. And then we have a bunch of people here crossing the road that I still haven't put in, so let's actually put that in. <laughs> There's this road here. It goes kind of like that, but not all of it is visible. There's this, the stripes here goes something like that. And I hope that makes more sense. And then we have the people. So again, this woman crossing the street all the way to the bottom here, quite tall. Then another woman here. And this is sometimes where I'll stop with the drawing stage for the people. Uh, but I'm actually going to continue because my goal here is to make it more accurate, okay? I'm going to try and verbalize as best as I can what I'm doing, but this is a little hard when you put in all sorts of small details, so my best may not be good enough, but we'll see about that. It's the most important part, and this is a pretty huge Jeep. I think I paint, I sketched it a little too big, but that's fine. Um, I don't know, it's pr it looks pretty tall, so I'm going to leave it like that. It turns into this street. I think that'll be it for this. Let's put in, let's delay the part with the people a bit. So I'm gonna put in all of these details in, and then I have to adhere to composite, to a perspective. So here we go with my lines, going at an angle, kind of fanning out. The building in the background has no real perspective. This building has no real perspective really because it's just facing towards us, dead center. 
there is a bit of it, but you can barely see it. I love the arches here, so that kind of a thing would be nice to include. So that's one, two, three, something like that. I know it's terrible, but as you know, <laughs> I have a habit of um, bringing out these details a little better when I'm with the brush in hand, okay? That's sometimes how I like to do it, so... Initially, the details may seem very weird and simplistic. Uh, but in any case, a bunch of windows here, not as important. Now let's get to the important stuff, the people. So I'm going to start with this woman. And it's always a challenge when it's a part of a scene for me. Because then you have to think about so many things. But that's her head. Uh, I'm going to try and do my best. That's her uh, hand, kind of to the side of her body. And I think just putting in a few more details will go a long way in making sure this does look more like people and less like the gimmicky, you know, that's what I want to avoid, the gimmicky look of people that are just a red dot for the face and then, you know, some black for the body and, and wearing suits, like all wearing suits. I don't like that. <laughs> I want to get rid of that. So here we go. Her backpack hangs pretty low. And then we have one leg goes here and another one at the back. So the f this leg that's closer to us, and then the foot, and then the other side of the leg. Hopefully that makes sense. And then here we have this other leg. Not that I'm a ma master of sketching people, but that'll work. And uh, now we have this couple here. A very nice composition with the light and shadow. So this dude's face somewhere around this he has this shirt um shoulders they're holding hands so that's where they're gonna hold their hands then he has a bag in his hand and it's okay to simplify some of the people i just don't want to rely on a crutch okay and hopefully you can see everything i'm doing i don't want to zoom in on purpose because i want you to see the entire composition as it unfolds okay i want you to see how i incorporate these figures as part of the scene this is really important. Now we have the woman here. If you don't want to, you can skip this part and just skip directly to uh, the part with the with the painting. But I really want to show it for, for one for once, like actually how it's done. Um, and of course, had I painted this larger, I'd have more room for more details, a little easier to get them in. And if I haven't filmed this for a YouTube video, it would have been easier. You know, just with videos, it's it's always a hit and miss. You know, you don't really know what the result's going to be like. Uh, and that's her other leg, like so. Um, kind of like this. Trying to, to have the figures actually flow and look good um, and get the gesture right. This is the front leg, back leg. Shirt and somewhere around here. But this should do it for these people. Now, these figures I'm going to uh, make life a little easier for myself. They are smaller, much more in the... Uh, feel a little more in the distance. This woman has a jacket and a striped shirt. We'll get that all later on. And again, apologies if you can't see the details fully um, or as is because the lines are very light here so that's uh, just something I want to go with for starters I don't want to go too dark this woman I'll, I will simplify a little more heavily a leg and another leg and then I can drop some people back there if I want to these are gonna be fairly simplified okay these are really gonna be like the normal simpler types of people Okay, there's a bit of a crowd here at the back, just because there's a lot of people. It's New York. So, yeah. Um, with that being said, I think we can start uh, to paint this. So let me prepare everything and we'll get started with that. So on to the first wash and I'm going to try and do something interesting here. I will put a bit of color on some of the buildings. Uh, like so. Very random and strange, I know. But let's try it out. I love trying some new things you know, once in a while. Um, so a bit of red. This is intuitive. I have no way of explaining. I'm just painting the temperature. So if the building feels like it's in the sun, in a strong sunlight, I'm gonna have the light be very strong and sunny and warm. And that's pretty much it. Now here's the interesting part of the experiment. Let's bring into that some blue for the sky, okay? I wanted to split the stage up 
like this and then pour the blue from up top, you see? I don't know why, sometimes it helps the paint blend a little nicer. So like that. And everything is still pretty blended nicely together, you see? Uh, I want this to feel like uh, a, a, a glue, like the glue of the painting, okay? This stage is really all just one even layer, okay? That's really important for this. And then we have this building in the background. I'm actually gonna put some pure yellow for that. I don't know why, it feels a little golden. And I'm taking a bit of a weird and risky approach here, but uh, hopefully that'll work out for me. Um, so here we go. Now the people are actually gonna be all, uh, no white highlights, really. So I'm just gonna cover the whole thing up, but with lighter paint, okay? And this is where I don't mind so much to show individual colors yet. I'm just gonna cover the whole thing up. One thing I did learn is sometimes you need to strengthen it the more you get to the bottom, um, because it helps with the with this feeling closer to us. I don't know why, something about the value that's getting darker when you're closer. Uh, and also it will help to create this sense of depth and movement into the painting. What I could have done is left the, um, what do you call these, the cross, crossing, crosswalk, sorry, uh, white and I haven't. So I may bring that back with opaque paint or I'll may, I may try and lift back some of it. Okay, so let's try that. That's something I, I messed up, I should have left. I think it would have looked a little better. But in any case, now it's too late to, you know, cry over that. I'll just do my best. Sometimes the best way to lift, by the way, is to just have, take a piece of toilet paper and just literally dry the section out. So let me try and do that for you. You see, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work as well. Here we go, that's a little better. Let's get another one of those in. Like that, like that, like this. And hopefully that'll help patch things up a little. And if we need to further do this later on, well, it's not a problem. We can do that with opaque paint, plenty of means. Now, if something seems too dark or too strong, you can always come back and just pour some water over it, help lift it back a bit, like this building in the background feels a little strong, so just lifting back some of the paint, and I think helping it look a little more to the back. Uh, but aside from that, I think this is perfect. Now let's let it some uh, allow it some time to dry and come back and continue. So this is now fully dry, and I'm gonna get started with the next step. Now, uh, here's the thing. Uh, we need to figure out where the light and shadow is, where some of the lighter areas and darker areas are. So basically, this building is gonna stay quite light, okay? And this bottom stage is where most of the sh uh, shadows are gonna be. This side of the building is also quite light. This side's gonna be in the shadow. I'm gonna have a couple of interesting light and shadow shapes in the background. Car is gonna be in the shadow and casting a shadow. And then we're gonna stop somewhere around this line, okay? Right around here and then we'll continue with the people and figures. Um, now, one thing, I wanna start shading this section, but I don't want it to feel too detached from the top part. So here's a little trick for you. Uh, I'm just glazing very lightly the top section with some yellow, very, very lightly. And this way, once I get down below, I'm gonna have the freedom to play around with the edges. Let me show you what I mean. So I. I'm just allowing some of the paint to go through. This area I don't touch. And now when I start mixing in the shadows that are gonna be a little, let's cool them off a bit. That's wait, that's too warm. Now when I'm placing in the shadow under this architectural detail, you see how it kind of blends in. So it doesn't feel too detached from what's happening up top, okay? And then I can even use this opportunity to start indicating some windows like that. You don't have to be super accurate. And as you see, I definitely am not. But I think we'll let this dry a little more and then we'll come back for more windows once there's we have more control for the wet and wet. Now here we have another very small shadow like this. I love the fact that I was able to preserve that line. So let's keep it, let's not destroy that. Let's continue here towards the bottom. 
Uh, let's cover this section up. And then we'll have we'll invent another one because it's not really there like this. And this will connect to the actual arches. So here we go. And here you have to have some improvisational skills, really. And remember, I'm not as concerned with the background as I am concerned with getting the people right. Okay, so I'm, I'm choosing my battles, so to speak. You sometimes have to do that when painting. You have to choose what you're going to spend more time on and what you're going to uh, just do in a more easy, easygoing manner. Okay, so this is for that. And you see I'm trying to build up something that's interesting. So some interesting cast shadows from perhaps some details here, you see. Uh, everything together. I'm trying to do as much as I can at this stage so that I don't have to later on. It will provide a nice fresh look. And I'm already also starting to cool this off a bit around the bottom because we have this uh, sh very shadowy area. Here we go. Like this. Doing my best. Uh, this goes through here. I think I'm going to cover that up. And then uh, add into these poles there's a bunch of shadows there and hopefully that makes sense now here's where I have to be really careful around the people and so here we go and you think you know what I think I'm gonna add a bit of a line here showing the edge of the building I don't know why it feels right uh, and then I'm gonna leave some highlights there around this there's the woman she has a cap and there's this guy. Now here we're already in Shadowland, so let's go over it like this. This is all gonna be shadows. Now this is starting to dry, so let's put in, before we miss the chance, put in some more controlled windows, you see? And you don't have to put all of them in. In fact, it's best if you don't put too many of them in. So just a few. Maybe also like a kind of a line like that. Just to show that this is a building, let's do this here. Uh, and now we're back to the lower section. This is where the street starts and the shadow ends. So it's really important for me to get that right. Being again a little more careful around the people this time. Around her head, around his head, this is all in shadow. And hopefully that closes off the right section. Now this person I'm gonna add a shadow for. Let's close off this thing here. Let's add another. Let's make these people kind of in the shadow. Like this. Okay, so we're done with the right section, pretty much. Uh, one thing that will help is to wrap this shape up around the building, like that. This as well, this too, without overworking it. Just gives it a more three-dimensional look. So we're done with this section, let's move on to the left. Now here I do want to preserve that beautiful redness. So I'm going to start with a pure almost pure red straight from the well. And it's always important to make the connections to the right side that's more in the shadows. Now you see the windows are um, connected to the shadow here. So I'm gonna preserve that kind of a thing. Almost dipped my hand into the wet paint. I hate when that happens. Um, here we go, just a couple of windows connected to this top shadow. Just to make some connections, it always looks good. And then we have this kind of a line, dry brush. We have a bit of a more major line of shadow there. And then we have these rounded windows. Okay, like this, one, two. And uh, they have this nice little pattern around them. Again, I'm being quite forgiving with the actual um, buildings in the background. They're not meant to be the main point of interest here. So we're going to be more about the people. Now, while this is still wet, I'm going to add a bit more uh, yellow here. And we'll start indicating this shadow on the right. And this is going to be beautiful. Um, because all of this right side wall is in the shadow. So hopefully that makes sense. It's two buildings, in fact. So that's the one that's a little taller. So we'll get that in as well. It actually has some stuff on the balcony. Let's add those in just to, you know, make this look like it's a real building. It's not just something we made up. Um, this part goes here. And now we're off to connections land. So here we really have to make a lot of connections. 
I'm gonna make up this shadow here coming across because uh, I need some excuse to darken this background okay uh, and I'll often do these kinds of things and enough to, for for it to be a building there and it will um, it will make sense to have that kind of a connection now light comes from the left again so the lighter area is gonna be on the right here around the window I hope that makes sense maybe it does maybe it doesn't there's this thing here also now we have to connect it to the car and everything so I'm gonna leave a very gentle highlight around this woman and the car and again we don't have to worry about all the bottom part now we're here okay so we're gonna worry about this shape this is why I always recommend you start the shapes small so that you don't have to struggle through a large shape now here this is where the shadow line is so somewhere around here is where it's gonna end let's cover this up with a bit more uh, of a cooler mix just to close off this corner and this woman this is her uh, hoodie so we'll stop here uh, you could add there's a cyclist here so let's add him in just like that just to show some details maybe a person here something like that next off we're gonna work on the building here around a vehicle this is some dark shadows down here okay so we have to make sure this looks dark it's not as dark as you think you have to darken it sometimes more and more um, and then there's a bunch of buildings here a bunch of who knows what uh, but here there is a gap okay the edge of this building let's see where it is here in fact it's here and then there's more shadow here okay and you have to stay consistent so this shadow continues here continues here continues here and all the way behind this building and then we have the shadow cast by the car and by the other building so we're gonna place that in as well like so and then we're gonna move on to the building at the back now the building at the back we did it quite warm so now let's cool it off glaze a light blue on top of that very light that's a bit too much water get rid of some of that and here it's really important to keep things light because it's so in the background uh, we don't want to go too dark here by mistake and leave a couple of highlights for the different shapes of the architecture of the building it's a beautiful beautiful building so kind of like this and connect it with this wet wash a bit of this shape here to the sides just got to make this look like a building let's make it a little darker just a bit in places like so and hopefully that makes sense the tippy top of the building is here like this going around the people painting around the shadows we've established earlier and connecting all the way to here so now we have the basic background in it's time to work on the people the car and all of that let's actually start with this woman so her hair is blonde let's switch to a smaller brush and again now we're off gimmick land we're not gonna do anything that's you know Alvaro people Joseph Zbukovic people we're not gonna do any of that we'll paint people more authentically so here's her hair and I love that it merges with some of the background but I do need to keep some of it clean so I have to control it so I'm cleaning the brush and drying most of it and soaking back up you see uh, and that way it won't blend too much sometimes you have to use it as a sponge to some extent so here's her blonde hair it gets really dark near the front where her face are so let's darken that section up for the hair like this um, and then move on to a more neutral mix just for the face I don't want them to be completely blue even though they're in the shadow now for the sweater let's go for a bit of a cooler feeling that will make the face look warmer and I'm just gonna follow the shape of the cloth you see a bit more neutralized just touched this well and brought it back here uh, so not as stark of a blue as it was before and that's her uh, sweater some shadows on the hoodie you have to keep these uh, as accurate as you can then around her hand and all of this part is in the shadow now I don't care if it doesn't look perfect what I do care is that it looks like my figure and not something I borrowed off of someone else's style okay so it doesn't have to be perfect but I actually think it looks nice you know 
Um, and I'm, on purpose, I'm not going to add any warmth to the face. I don't want to go there. I don't even want to, you know, partially go there. Now, this is her pants, darker. Let's add more pigment, less water, because this really needs to get dark. Started adding a bit of phthalo blue to make it really darker. Almost running out of the battery in my camera, unfortunately. I'll have to take a break, probably. Uh, but in any case, here it is, one leg. Now, here's what's important here. You want to make sure that you do the cast shadow and you connect it to the figure. Because that's what's really gonna make this believable. Okay, so that leg's forward, this one's back. This one can be a little more blurry. Uh, there's the strap of her backpack. A bit more of the backpack here. And then I'm gonna add in the shadow. So it's kind of like this. Maybe let's cool it off a bit. Goes like that. I just paint it as I see it. See? And that's a person. That's a person without the gimmicks, without the, you know, here's how I learned that people look. I actually painted her the way she appears. And to do that, you sometimes need enough space. Sometimes the problem is you paint really small and you don't have enough room to do that kind of a thing. Okay, this is her other hand or whatever. That works really nicely. That's a bit of a shadow here. And that's perfect. Now, a bit of the people. Now, I'm going to start with these, this couple in the front, because they are uh, the most, the clearest to paint. So I'm going to leave the left side of this guy's face as a highlight. I'm going to add a bit of warmth to his face, but not too much. Oh, that's way too much. I didn't want that. I didn't want it to be red. So let's put in something like this. There we go. We neutralize it. Now, his shirt is blue. Just pure blue. Let's use some phthalo blue. Like so. Here we go. I left this small highlight. And there is also a shadow under his chin, like that. Now, the shirt itself is in the shadow too. And you do want to get that in. So let's mix a darker blue for the shadow. Dark yet quite neutralized. Put this part in the shadow, this entire right side in the shadow. This hand is going to be just holding that grocery bag or whatever it is and just holding it like so. All the bottom parts going to be in the shadow as well. We're going to soon connect it to the uh, female figure next to him. This picture was really nice. I had a feeling it can develop to something that looks good uh, when I initially took it. I don't know, I like the, I love the composition here. And then the leg, something like this. And then the, you gotta make it thicker. And then the other leg kind of connected, but more to the back. Here we go. Let's connect it to the shadow already. Just a part of it. So shadow under the shoe. And then off to the right, slightly behind him. Touching his other leg crossing through this leg. Now the other figure, female figure. A little bit of warmth for the face, so something like that. Then everything is pretty much in black, so let's mix a very dark value here. Let's have her a little more on the purple side, just to change it up with this yellow. And all of this is in the shadow. Like so, her hand is close to her body, like that. And the other hand is reaching out to here. And there's this hand mid-step, like so. Uh, leg, sorry. And this other leg forward. This one's barely touching the floor. And so not the best figure, but at least it's mine, you know. Uh, so here we This one turned out really nice. So here we go, like that. Put in the cast shadow of her as well. Kind of like this, connecting the two, and add a bit of warmth, I think, to her hand around the bottom. So just a bit of that here. Maybe even let's go with a bit more red this time. So hopefully that works out. And these are real people. Now for the people in the background, I'm just going to put in some very um, light details because we don't have much space to actually get them in. So they're going to be more of shadows, but I do want to make sure that their shapes are visible. So you see their uh, legs are visible. Uh, there is this one person in a really red 
kind of jacket thing. So let's get that in here. Like so. Now this woman in the foreground, I'm going to start with her dark clothes. And then I'll add this striped shirt underneath. So this goes kind of like that. And her pants, all of the lower body, her the jacket she's carrying, everything is fairly dark. One leg is sent forward while the other is kind of at the back. But then we have the stripes here. Hopefully I didn't botch. She has actually coffee in her hand. Uh, which is funny. A bit of a shadow to the right side of the face. And there's this other woman next to her. I'm actually really running out of battery, so I'll probably give this a break and then come back to the car and everything else. But this, you know, just there's a lot of detail in the figures that are close to us, so I can kind of simplify these figures too. She has thick legs, so let's get those in. Maybe she holds something, and obviously the cast shadow is really important bring this into the scene and then there's a bunch of people at the back that you really want to make sure you get their shapes inside of the curve uh, some some of those people in the back here uh, some cast shadows for those random you know made up people now we're gonna let this rest for a bit and add the car and some details and wrap it up so this is almost done here just a couple of small touches i will start by adding in that car that i told you about then we'll add a couple of highlights where necessary, uh, a couple of small details, and wrap it up. So uh, I'm going to leave a small gap. Let's straighten this line a bit. Leave this small white gap just to show uh, where the car uh, starts. Maybe there's some light reflecting on it, so we want to preserve that. A uh, bit of a shadowy shape here on the bottom section of the car. I'm not going into too many details here as long as the car kind of plays its role, so to speak. Uh, it's gonna create a nice contrast with her face. She actually has sunglasses on, I just now noticed. So let's connect those in, make the forehead a little smaller and add the bottom part of the car. So Chevrolet and here, a bit of a shadow like that. Notice how it straightened the face and the shape. I'm gonna add in the tire here. A bit of a shadow under the car itself. And it's being cast to the right. This is the sidewalk. This shadow could be a little longer. Maybe there's a bunch of people at the back we don't even see. But with that, we're almost done. Um, I will cast another random shadow here just by I don't know what it is, but there, is, there seems to be something there that requires uh, this kind of a shadow, like so. And then make some connections. Maybe it's people, maybe something else, I don't know. And hopefully that looks like something, I guess. Now I'm going to put in some lights for the car. So one is going to be here, another one is going to be here. And the paint is still a little moist, so... Uh, hopefully that works out. Actually, you know what? Let's connect the two. I think these two shadows should be connected. I don't know why it's too too messy to make that separation. In any case, so here we go. Um, now there is this light post here, like so. I want to put in now inside the Kmart store. There are a couple of lights for you know ceiling lights, floor scent lights stuff like that. I do want to add a couple of highlights to some people, uh, but I'm not going to overdo it this time, hopefully. White <laughs> shoes, let's just draw them white, I don't know, it looks nice. Here's a shoe, here's another one. She also has white shoes, probably came back from a workout. Um, and I'm just thinking if there are any other details I really want to put in. Above the arches, there's this kind of a, I don't know, architectural thing going on like that, this line, let's get back some of this, um, hmm, what else, I think this is nearly done, I don't want to overcomplicate it, and to be quite frank, I'm happy that, let's, let's just get a cap here, uh, I'm quite happy, because if I can get one thing to look the way I wanted to, then I'm completely pleased, and in this one, it's this, uh, this one is really just the way I uh, envisioned her. Yeah, I think it's a great representation of the reference. In fact, let me hold it up a little closer so that you can see. 
And I think that's a really good uh, execution of the process and getting something that looks authentic, looks like my own, it's not gimmicky, it's not someone else's painting. And now let's just remove the tape here and we'll call it a day. So let me do that, I'll sign this one later, no need for you to look at me write my name repeatedly on different paintings. Here we go. There is one thing, you know what, and I, I got lucky, I stopped on time. One thing that I wanted to add earlier already and I forgot and now we have the chance to do that. So just some directional lines for the sidewalk. So here we go, that's one, that's another one. It's, you can barely see them. I'm not too worried about going over this white border because if it's gonna be framed, it's just gonna be on top of that. But in any case, here we go, like this. Just to give this some kind of an anchor to the ground. And now let's just finish removing the tape. Hopefully that makes sense. And here is the final result, clean. I hope you enjoyed this process. Now we can wrap it up. So this is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this process. A very interesting scene that I'll probably try and tackle again and perhaps in a larger size. But I do hope this is a good example of showing you how to more authentically paint what you see and avoid going into autopilot mode. Now, obviously you have to practice this. I can't really teach you, okay, do this to not go into autopilot mode. You have to be very observant. You have to take your time, look at the reference, figure out why things appear to be the way they are and then reverse engineer and paint them as accurately as you can see them. This is what I did here today. Here's another close look. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you have, that really, really helps to promote the video. Also leave a comment down below if you have a question or a comment or just you wanna say something. And make sure you're subscribed if you still haven't. I have tons of other tutorials like this one. And above all, I wanna thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.